In order to do sampling rate conversion, we need three main blocks. The first one is called a down sampler. The second one is called an up sampler. And the third one is a discrete time low pass filter. So let's see what do these things exactly mean. So what is a down sampler first? This down sampler, sometimes the term that is used is also decimator or decimation. In the case of down sampling, both these terms can be used interchangeably often, although some authors do make a distinction. So in terms of block diagram, you say that you have an input xn, and then you use this down arrow and m to get xd of n, where m is an integer greater than 1. So in this case, we say that this is a m fold down sampler. So mathematically, what is a down sampler? Well, the output of a down sampler xdn is simply xn m for n from 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so forth. So if you stare at this equation, you realize that a down sampler is nothing but a device that actually keeps only every mth sample of your original sequence and throws out the rest. So it keeps only every mth sample of input sequence and throws out the rest. Okay. Effectively, it keeps a sample, throws out m minus 1 more samples, keeps the next sample, throws out m minus 1 samples, and so forth. So let's take a very particular example of that for a length. So xn take to be a length 12 sequence. So everything else is 0. So here is xn. It is plus 1, minus 1, and length 12. So what happens if I take xn and I downsample it by a factor of 2 to get xd of n. So as the expression says, we will keep a sample throughout one sample, keep a sample throughout one sample. So in this case, we'll start with n equal to 0. We'll keep this sample throughout the sample, keep this sample throughout the sample, keep this one throughout this one, keep this one throughout this one, and we'll keep on doing that. So if you were to see then what xdn will look like will be a length 6 sequence It will have length 6 because you threw out every other sample because you had decimation by a factor of 2. Now let's look at the same sequence xn, but now decimated by a factor of 3. So you should then know that since the original sequence was length 12, the new sequence will have only 4 samples. 12 will get divided by 3. But how would it work? Well, the principle is the same. You start with n equal to 0. You keep that sample. But now you throw away next two samples. Then you keep the third sample. Then you throw away next two samples. You keep the next sample. Throw away next two samples. Keep the next two samples. Throw away next two samples. So if you do that, what you would get is you would have 1 
minus 1, 1, and minus 1. So this will be a length 4 sequence. So you can see that decimation, all it does is we gave the mathematical expression earlier, which is this is the relationship, but what it does is effectively just saying that keep a sample, throw away the rest m minus 1 samples, and then keep a sample and so forth. So that's all a down sampler does. Now let's look at the next building block, which is an up sampler. Now an up sampler is used in interpolation or when we want to increase the sampling rate. A down sampler is used when we want to decrease the sampling rate. An up sampler is used when we want to increase it and even though some authors do interchange that the two terms, they should not be used interchangeably because they do have a slightly different relationship with each other. Okay, so what is an upsampler? An upsampler takes as the input xn. The block diagram is very similar to downsampling but with an up arrow and an integer. You get xen, where again l greater than 1 is an integer. So we say that we are doing upsampling by a factor of l. Now, mathematically, what is an upsampler? xen is defined as x of n divided by l for n from 0 plus minus l plus minus 2l and so forth. So multiples of l and it's 0 otherwise. Okay, so let's stare at this mathematical expression again and see what does this mean. Well, what this says is that an upsampler actually inserts L minus one zeros between any two samples of your original sequence. Okay? So while a down sampler threw away samples, an up sampler adds zeros into your original sequence. So let's take an example again. So let's start with a length 3 sequence. Xn. What is that sequence? Well, I'll just take that to be 1, 1, and 1, and everything else is 0. So that is n equal to 0, 1, 2. This is your xn. And let's say that I input now this xn into an upsampler that does upsampling by a factor of 2. What will I get in that case? Well, we'll start with the first sequence sequence uh, first value then we'll insert l minus 1 0 so 1 0 then I take the next value insert a 0 take the next value and insert a 0 so I end up with a length 6 which is 3 into 2 equal to 6 sequence so in this case this is my x e n now, what happens if I upsample by a factor of 3? So the same sequence, I'm going to actually upsample now by a factor of 3. What happens in that case? Well, my xen now will be the first sample, but now I insert two zeros. 
Next sample, I insert two zeros. Next sample, I insert two zeros. And after that, since everything was zero, I can keep on inserting zero, but it wouldn't change. So I get length of three by three equals to length nine sequence. So a down sampler throws away samples, an up sampler adds samples. Now let's look at the final building block, which is a discrete time low pass filter. So the third building block is discrete time low pass filter so there are two kinds of low pass filters we used in sampling rate conversion the first one is used with a down sampler and we'll discuss later how it is used and what's the implications of that so the low pass filter has cutoff frequency in that case of pi by M and gain equals one. So this is the low pass filter that you use with a down sampler and what that means is your frequency response is given by one for frequencies up to pi over M and then zero within the mean period for frequencies above pi over M. We also will be using a low pass filter with up sampler. Again, why we need that, that will be discussed later. So when we use it with up sampler, the cutoff frequency is again in terms of the integer factor, but the difference from the down sampler will be that the gain will be in this case equal to L. which means that if I write down the Fourier transform, that will be equal to L up to the cutoff frequency of pi over L and zero for frequencies other than this range. So just remember these three main building blocks. We will be returning to them when we discuss explicit effects of downsampling, upsampling, and interpolation in terms of the frequency domain.